Ben were about to get married. They wanted to book a hotel for their wedding ceremony in the party, so they went to a wedding planner to look at some options. She told them only three hotels were available for the day they wanted and showed them the pictures. Which one should they choose? Take a closer look at the third floor windows of the first hotel. In the last window on the right, there's a creepy shadow of a monster that appears and disappears. Five stars or not, no one would like to get married in a haunted place unless they're an Adams family member. In the third hotel only has two stars. It probably doesn't have the facilities to host a wedding, so the best choice is the second hotel. Great choice, the wedding planner said, and you're in luck because they actually have a great discount offer. If you can answer this riddle correctly, you won't have to pay for the ballroom rental. Here it is. Those who have it, do not say it. Those who take it, do not know it. Those who know it, do not want it. What is it? Do you know the answer? It's fake money. The next day, Ben and Jenny went to the hotel to pick the best ballroom for their party. The hotel manager took them to three different rooms where they could host everything, from the ceremony itself to the dinner and after party. Which one should they pick? Do you see a little mouse hole in the corner of the first ballroom? The couple wouldn't want such uninvited guests at their party. As for the second ballroom, the chandelier looks like it might fall down any minute. Not the safest option, so they should pick the third ballroom. It was time for Ben and Jenny to pick the wedding menu. Since they were not paying for the venue, they wanted to spare no expense in serving food that the guests would never forget. That's why they called three different Michelin star chefs. Each of them prepared a different dish and presented them for a tasting. Which chef, and therefore, which dish should they go for? Even though the dish the second chef made looks perfectly fine, do you see a rat's tail hanging from his chef's hat? There must be some ratatouille situation going on there. So that's a pass. The third dish looks like spaghetti, right? Well, look again. Those are actually very thin snakes. Exotic flavors might not be the best option, so they better go with the classical burger that the first chef made. Before they made their wedding vows, Jenny had to say yes to a dress. So, she went to a couture store to check their wedding gown collection. She explained to the designer the style of the dress she wanted for her ceremony. The designer said he had just the perfect gown for her and would bring it to her if she answered his riddle correctly. He asked, if a gown takes an hour to dry, how many hours will it take six dresses to dry? It'll still take one hour because they'll all dry at the same time. Ben had one last item to buy on his wedding shopping list, and it was what fastens two people yet touches only one. Can you figure out what it is? It's a wedding ring, of course. Ben headed to a jewelry store to get something blue for his bride. The store owner showed him three different wedding rings with blue gemstones. Which one should he buy? The second ring has an engraving inside, so it must have belonged to someone else before. The gemstone on the third ring has a tiny crack in it. That can only mean it's made of glass or even plastic. So, Ben should buy the first ring with a sapphire. Next, Ben and Jenny were going to send out invitations. One print shop offered them three different versions of invitations. Which one should they choose?
Do you remember the name of the hotel they booked? It was Sunrise Lodge, but the first invitation says Sunset Lodge, so this one won't do. And on the third invitation, their names are printed as Benny and Jen. That's not our couple, so they should choose the second invitation. Before the wedding, three of their friends paid them a visit. One of them brought a painting as a wedding gift, but all three claimed that they were the artist who had created it. Two of them must be lying. Can you figure out who the actual artist is? Take a look at the signature on the painting. It says, Denise. Now look at the third friend's necklace. It has the letter D. So she must be Denise, the artist who painted the painting. It was finally the day of the wedding, and Ben and Jenny's guests started to arrive. However, the hotel security spotted three suspicious-looking people who could be uninvited. Take a look at these three guys. Can you tell which one is not supposed to be at the wedding? Do you see the hotel wristbands that say Ben and Jenny that the second and the third guys are wearing? That can only mean they are actually invited. So it's the first guy who's crushing the wedding. Sorry dude, no free drinks for you. After the vows were exchanged, it was time to party. As Ben and Jenny were dancing, someone spilled their drink on Jenny's dress, but no one saw who it was. Jenny spotted three people who could have done it. Take a look at them. Can you tell who ruined her dress? The first guy has spots on his shirt that resemble stains from the spilled drink, but they are actually part of the pattern, so it can't be him. The third lady looks clean, but the hem of the second lady's skirt looks dirty, so it must be her who did it. After the ceremony ended, Ben and Jenny wanted to take a photo to capture the moment forever. But take a look at it, there's something strange about it. Can you spot what it is? Can you see a woman hiding behind the trees, watching them? She is wearing a witch hat, but it's a wedding ceremony and not a costume party. Creepy. Right before leaving, Jenny suddenly vanished. Then the witch suddenly appeared in front of Ben and said, You may only kiss the bride if you figure out with whom you really tied the knot. Ha <laughs> ha! Then two Jennies appeared in front of Ben. Can you tell which one is his real wife? Remember the wedding photo? The Jenny on the left is the real one because her tattoo is on the same side as in the photo. Now that Ben and Jenny's wedding was over, phew, it was time for them to pick a honeymoon destination. They went to a travel agency to book a tour. The travel agent offered them three different holiday destinations, Ibiza, Cannes, and the Caribbeans. Which one should they go to? Have you noticed the weather forecast on TV in the office? It states that the weather in Ibiza is going to be windy in the upcoming days, and in Cannes, it's going to be rainy, so they should pick the Caribbeans and enjoy the sun. The travel agent said she could upgrade their plane tickets to business class for free. It would be her wedding gift to them. But they had to crack this riddle. What can travel around the world while staying in a corner? It's a stamp. Mr. and Mrs. Luce have seven daughters. Each daughter has one brother. Can you tell how many people there are in the family? The correct answer is 10. Mr. Luce, Mrs. Luce, seven daughters, and one brother. Dr. Luce is a world famous chemist. Wow. He has just arrived in London to attend an international science seminar. The next morning, the lab cleaner found Dr. Luce unconscious on the floor. Ah. 
one of the six lab assistants poisoned the chemist. The names of the six assistants are Austin, William, Oscar, Leo, DJ, and Robert. To solve this case, lab managers called the local detective, Mr. Smith. Hmm. Dr. Luce left this mysterious note on the table. Here's what he wrote. 76, 20, 44, 79, 16, 22, 7. After reading the note, Mr. Smith asked the police to arrest two criminals. Who are the criminals? Oscar and Dustin. Remember that Dr. Luce is a chemist? He encrypted the names of his enemies using the periodic table hanging on the wall. Dr. Luce got better and returned to his work in the lab. He invited a young scientist, Oscar, for a job interview. His resume was too good to be true, so Dr. Luce decided to check Oscar's logical thinking. He offered Oscar to solve this number puzzle. Oscar cracked this task right away. What about you? Here's a little hint. You should read this puzzle from left to right and from top to bottom. Question 1. What are the next two rows of numbers? And question 2. Why? Here's the correct answer. Line 3 represents two ones. Line 4 then becomes one, two, and one, one. Line 5, therefore, is 1, 1, 1, 2, and 2 ones. Using the same logic, we can now decode line 6, 3 ones, 2 twos, and 1, 1. Line 7 is 1, 3, 1, 1, 2 twos, and 2 ones. Dr. Luce hired Oscar and took him to the basement of the lab, but someone has changed the password on the door. Can you help the guys guess the code? This rebus is a hint. The correct password is summary. Dr. Luce offered one more riddle to his new employee. How can a man go eight days without sleep? Can you help Oscar crack this one? The correct answer is easily because people sleep at night. In the basement, Dr. Luce found out that someone had stolen his latest innovation, a superhero costume. He had questioned three suspects. Jack, the cleaner, said, I've been cleaning the floor in the hallway all morning. I haven't entered your office yet. Hmm. Peter, the lab assistant, said, I was working on my own project, and besides, I don't have a key to your private office. Hmm. And Dr. Luce's wife, Helen, said, You never tell me anything about your work. How would I know what to steal? Hmm. Dr. Luce took fingerprints from the closet where the costume was. But he found only his own fingerprints. Who stole the costume? It was Helen. She's the only one who's wearing gloves. Oh. After a short interrogation, Helen confessed that she had sold the costume to Dr. Luce's major enemy, Dr. Phillips. Dr. Luce went to his lab to take his invention back. A creepy guard stopped Dr. Luce at the entrance and asked for a password. Can you help Dr. Luce find out the code? See the sign on the wall? You should rearrange these letters to spell just a single word. So, the correct password is a single word. Dr. Luce entered the building and found himself in a strange place guarded by two people. One of the guards always says the truth, while the other one always lies. Dr. Luce doesn't know who is who. He can only ask one question to escape. What should he ask? If he asks the guard who always tells the truth, he would tell that the other guard would point to the dangerous door. And if he asks the guard who always lies, he would tell the opposite door of the truth-telling guard and point to the dangerous door. In either case, both guards will point to the dangerous door, and then Dr. Luce should just choose the other door. 
Dr. Luce entered the room and saw this group of scientists. Can you spot anything weird in this picture? The scientists are holding four slices of pizza in their hands, but only three pieces are missing from the pizza box. Hmm. Dr. Luce entered Dr. Phillips' office. The room was empty. Can you help him find anything suspicious? Someone is hiding in the ceiling vent. <laughs> Suddenly, Dr. Lu saw Dr. Phillips flying around in the superhero costume. He grabbed Dr. Luz, took him to the top of a mountain, and left him there alone. Dr. Luz wandered around and found three tunnels. There's an angry, hungry lion in the first tunnel. There's a huge fire in the second tunnel. And the third tunnel leads through a dinosaur lair. Which way should Dr. Luz choose? The third one. Dinosaurs became extinct millions of years ago. Dr. Luce came to a village and asked the local farmer, Rick, for a glass of water. Rick told him that he'd been struggling to divide his entire land between his two sons. Both of the sons have been very good to him. And now, Rick's only wish is to treat his sons fairly and divide his land equally between them. But the problem is that the land has a weird shape. And thus, there's no way to split it into two equal halves. Dr. Luce said, I have an idea. It can guarantee that the land will be divided in a matter that will satisfy both sons. Can you guess what's on his mind? All Rick needs to do is ask one of his sons to divide the land into two parts and tell him that the other son will have the choice of selecting one of those two halves. In this manner, both of them will avoid any tricks and divide the land equally. Dr. Luce was sitting at the local restaurant. He was sad because he'd lost his wallet during his adventures. He noticed a man next to him pulling a wad of $100 notes out of his pocket. Dr. Luce turned to the rich guy and said, Hey, I have an amazing talent. I know almost every song that has ever existed. The rich guy laughed. Dr. Luce then said, I'm willing to bet you all the money you have in your wallet that I can sing a genuine song with a lady's name of your choice in it. The rich man laughed again and said, Okay, how about my wife's name, Helga Fiona Mary Rose Holmes? This evening, the rich man went home poor, and Dr. Luce went home rich. What song did he sing? The Happy Birthday Song The villagers told Dr. Luce mystical legends about the local forest. He liked creepy stories and decided to go there and see it for himself. Oh, really? He set off at night and soon got to the forest. He noticed a small shop nearby. The seller said, Hey bro, don't go to this forest unequipped. Take this magic potion. It will make any creepy monster fall asleep for 10 hours. Dr. Luce took one bottle and continued the journey. He wandered there for several hours, but he didn't see anything mysterious. Dr. Luce was about to leave right before dawn. Someone appeared in front of him. A pair of vampires that feed on humans and a siren who hunts people using her singing. <laughs> so there are three enemies, but Dr. Luce has only one potion. What should he do? The sun will rise in a few seconds, and vampires will run away. That's why he should pour the potion at the siren. Dr. Luce found an abandoned castle. As soon as he entered, someone locked the door. Dr. Luce found three ways out, but all of them were dangerous. The first path was full of hungry wolves. It was impossible to get through. The second passage was guarded by five vacuum cleaner robots that were reprogrammed to hunt down humans. And the third passage was filled with molten lava. What door should he choose? The second one. The vacuum cleaners might go after him, but they're pretty harmless. Finally, Dr. Luce returned to his hometown. He's also a college teacher. Unfortunately, he didn't have enough time to prepare for the upcoming class. Oh. Therefore, he offered the students this tricky lesson. 
There was no homework, assignments, or tests, but there was a final test that would have only one question on it. When everyone received the test, it was a blank sheet of paper with a question on it. What is risk? Most students managed to give their answers, but only one student deserved the highest grade. Yes! That's weird because he only wrote down one word. What did he write? His reply was this. Dr. Luce went on a business trip to Vienna. He felt very nervous because he was about to meet a lady he used to date in college, Jane. She's also a scientist who's currently working on immortality pills. That's why she asked Dr. Luce to come over and help her. As soon as he entered her office, he knew that something had gone wrong. Three zombies were standing in the room. Can you tell which one is his ex-girlfriend? Take a look at Dr. Luce's hand. He has a tattoo, T plus J. So his girlfriend is the second zombie because she has a tag on her foot that says Jane. Amy's elder sister, Vicky, gave her this shopping list and asked her to get some groceries. Amy took the list without even looking at it. But when she arrived at the supermarket, she realized that her sister had pranked her. Vicky has encoded the names of the products she needed. Can you help Amy figure out what she's supposed to buy? Here's the first product. It's blueberry. What about this one? Watermelon. Can you recognize this food? That's right, it's kiwi. Here's the next rebus. Can you crack this code? Grape. What about this one? Pineapple. Great job. Next riddle. Any ideas? Vicky needs some bananas. And how about this food? That's right, Amy should buy some oranges. And here's the final product. Can you figure out what it is? Lemon. Amy took everything she needed and headed to the cashier. He said, I'll give you a 90% discount if you manage to solve my riddle. Amy agreed. Here's the riddle. If you had three apples and four oranges in one hand, and four apples and three oranges in the other hand, what would you have? Can you help Amy crack this riddle to save some money? Try to think outside the box. Obviously, you must have very large hands to hold all this. Amy left the supermarket and headed home. But suddenly, she realized that she'd left her wallet at the checkout. She ran back to the supermarket, but the wallet was nowhere to be found. Amy questioned three people standing nearby. Bob the cashier said, Sorry, I didn't see your wallet. I had the other customers. One of the customers, Kim, said, I think I saw the cleaner take your wallet from the checkout after you'd left. And the cleaner, Nancy, said, Who do you think I am? I need this job to support my family. Who stole the wallet? Beep. 
It was Kim. She's holding her own wallet in her hand. But there's also Amy's wallet hidden in her boot. Amy didn't want to waste her time, so she told Kim, I won't call the police if you give me back my wallet and crack my riddle. Kim agreed. Here's the riddle. Can you name four days which start with the letter T? It was Kim's lucky day because she managed to solve this riddle. What was her reply? Tuesday, Thursday, today, and tomorrow. Amy, Vicky, and their boyfriends Josh and Greg went hiking and got lost. They wandered around the forest for a few hours and found this sign. There were three paths through the forest. The first one would take them to a toxic swamp. No one has ever returned from that swamp alive. Hungry tigers were blocking the second road. And to use the third path, the guys had to cross an ice-cold mountain river. Which way is the safest? The third one. See this sign? It says the river is only 20 inches deep. They can easily cross it. It got dark very fast. While the friends were still trying to find a way to cross the river, their phones had run out of battery and they only had one torch. The river is too risky to cross without any lighting. If all four people started crossing the river at the same time, the torchlight wouldn't be enough. Plus, each person would be crossing the river at a different speed. Amy would need only one minute. Vicky would do it in two minutes. Josh would need seven minutes and Greg, 10 minutes. What's the shortest time needed for all friends to cross the river? Usually, people jump to the conclusion that the fastest person should guide everyone. In this case, Amy would have to accompany Greg. It'd take 10 minutes. Then she would need one minute to come back. She'd guide Josh across the river. It'd take seven minutes. Then Amy would spend one minute to return for Vicky and make the final two-minute walk across the river. In this case, the entire process would take 21 minutes. But our task is to minimize the time. That's why we should find a way for the slowest people to walk together. So here's the correct order. Amy and Vicky cross the river, which takes them two minutes. Then Vicky comes back. That's another two minutes. Greg and Josh take the torch from Vicky and go across the river. It takes them 10 minutes. Then Amy comes back with the torch, takes Vicky, and they cross the river together. That's three minutes. In this case, the total time will be 17 minutes. After crossing the river, the guys meet a woodsman. He promises to guide them out of the forest hey. if they solved his riddle. What do an island and the letter T have in common? After the friends answered, the woodsman explained to them how to find the bus stop and disappeared. What did they say? The letter T and the island are both in the middle of the water. It took a while to find the bus station and the guys got hungry. That's why they decided to buy some food. But only one of these vending machines is safe to use. Can you tell which one? Someone scribbled cash eater on this vending machine, so it's probably not working. Cockroaches are crawling all over the food inside this machine. The guys should use the second vending machine. When the bus arrived, the guys realized that they didn't have enough cash to buy the tickets. But the driver was very generous. He said, I'm going to give you a free ride if you crack my riddle. It's very simple. Why is six afraid of seven? Amy solved this riddle right away. What about you? Because when it was hungry, seven, eight, nine. The guys took their seats on the bus. Can you find anything weird here?
this elderly lady is transparent. She's a ghost. When Amy and Vicky returned home, they discovered that someone had robbed their house. The girls called the police. Detectives questioned three neighbors. Mary said, Last week, my husband Rick and I were sunbathing in the Maldives. Rick got sunburned, and we had to go back home earlier. We've just come from the airport. Love said, I think I saw a suspicious guy in a hoodie near your house a few hours ago. Joanna said, My boyfriend and I celebrated our anniversary in a restaurant. We've just returned home. Who's lying? Mary. She said that Rick had gotten sunburned, but now he looks perfectly fine, and he doesn't look tanned either. Amy decided to get a new job to save some money for college. She sent her resume to the local bank and received an invitation for a job interview. The HR manager offered her a riddle to challenge her logical thinking. Imagine you have an unlimited number of coins in your wallet. What's the minimum number of coins you'll need? to make sure that each of these coins will touch exactly three others. Can you help Amy get the job? The correct answer is four. She should place three coins flat on the table so that they form a triangle and their edges touch each other. And then she can put the fourth coin in the middle on top of the rest. Amy got the job in the bank. After her first day at work was over, she went home. But on her way home, she realized she'd forgotten her phone in the bank. So she went back and took her phone. Suddenly, the girl heard some weird noise coming from the bank vault. She went there and saw these three men inside the room. She noticed that one of them was an imposter right away. What about you? Can you spot him? The third guy doesn't belong here. Look, he's wearing a police badge. He must be working undercover. The robbers ran away and locked Amy and the police officers inside the vault. Now they have to solve this riddle to unlock the door. They have to find a way to connect these nine stars by using just four lines, all without lifting their hand even once. Can you help them find the right way? Such a task requires creativity, and this shape meets all requirements. But maybe you came up with something better. Amy bought flowers for her sister's birthday. She was walking down the street, holding the bouquet in her hands. Suddenly, a man in a mask ran up to her, grabbed the flowers, and ran to the nearest restaurant. Amy started crying. A patrol car stopped next to her. Amy told the police officer what had happened. They went to the restaurant together to find the criminal. There were four men with very similar bouquets. Can you tell who robbed Amy? This guy. Amy's bouquet was tied with purple ribbon. Vicky organized a birthday party. To avoid uninvited guests, she asked the security guard to set a special password. But her boyfriend, Harry, who was most definitely not invited, developed a plan that could help him enter the party. He hid near the door and started to listen attentively. When the first guest arrived, the guard said, 12. The guest answered with, 6. Then the second guest arrived, and the guard said, 6. The guest replied with, 3. Harry thought he'd heard enough and walked up to the guard. The man said, 8, and Harry replied with, 4. After hearing this answer, the guard asked Harry to leave. Why? Because the password is not half the number, it's the number of letters in the word. He should have said 5 because the word 8 consists of 5 letters. Can you count the number of squares in this image? The correct answer is 40.
Lewis returns home after sunbathing on a beach. He turns on the stove to make an omelet. Sometime later, while he's having breakfast, someone knocks on his door. Several men introduce themselves as maintenance workers. They tell Lewis about a gas leak in his apartment and ask him to evacuate immediately. Lewis slams the door in their faces and calls the police. He's sure these guys are thieves. Why would Lewis think that? He fried his eggs on the electric stove, not a gas one. Thieves wanted to lure him out of his apartment and steal his stuff. Six people got stuck on a desert island. They know a helicopter will arrive in a few hours, but they need to eat something now. They have a pot, a bottle of fresh water, and five potatoes. They cook them and are about to have dinner. But first, they need to divide five potatoes of different sizes and shapes among six people. And the food should be distributed equally. How can they do it? Easy. They should just prepare mashed potatoes. One famous film director loved it when people spoke about him, even if it was something negative. Once, he made a terrible movie. The man wanted people to hate it. Critics and viewers called his movie bad, unacceptable, ridiculous, and embarrassing every day. And the director enjoyed it. A couple of years later, in an interview, he asked a journalist, So, uh, what do you think about my latest movie? The journalist replied shortly, but his answer offended the director. What did the journalist say? I, uh, don't remember it. Three girls met in a cozy restaurant to discuss an upcoming party. Jessica ordered a lot of food. Sarah asked for cherry juice. Lucy took an apple out of her bag and started eating it. The waiter brought the juice and the ordered food and left. Sarah started sipping her drink from the glass, but Jessica didn't touch her meal at all. Someone's not human, but who? It's the waiter. Did you see that his hands were covered with scales and his pupils looked like those of a snake? A traveler is walking through a dense Amazon jungle. He's looking for a unique artifact that once belonged to an ancient tribe. If his mission is successful, he'll sell his find for millions of dollars. He comes out of the jungle into a wide clearing and sees two caves. They're both filled with traps, but only one of them contains the treasure. The traveler's sure he'll be able to deal with all the dangers, but only if he chooses the right cave. Which cave should he opt for? The right cave. See, the entrance is overgrown with cobwebs. This means that no one's been there for a very long time. All the other treasure hunters entered the left cave, and they never came back. Mark's friends invited him to a picnic. He arrived at the place, walked around the house, and saw a group of eight people. None of them was his friend. It was the wrong house. Before leaving, Mark noticed that three people in that group were androids. Can you spot them? That guy is pouring a drink from a gasoline container. Smoke is coming out of this elderly lady's head because of a short circuit. And this girl is charging her phone through a cable connected to her neck. After a shipwreck, Jack found himself on a desert island. He built a raft and equipped it with small sails that he took from the ruined ship. Jack couldn't sail far from the shore because there was no wind. A few days later, he noticed a ship. It was approaching the island but its wind-filled sails were facing the opposite direction. According to the laws of physics, it should be sailing away from the island. Besides, there was no wind. So how is it possible that the ship was getting closer to the shore? The ship was equipped with a motor. Richard is walking through the forest barefoot because some monkeys have stolen his shoes. He's cold and hungry. Fortunately, he spots a hut. Smoke is coming out of the chimney and light is shining through the windows. 
Three paths lead to the house. The first is covered with red hot coals, and there are loads of rusty nails on the second one. And the third path is littered with broken glass. Yikes, which way should Richard choose? It's cold, so Richard can wait until the coals cool down. And while he's waiting, he can warm up next to them. Toby has been wandering through the desert for several hours. The sun's burning his neck. There's nothing but hot sand around. He's run out of all the water he had. Toby gets weaker and weaker, and finally, he falls down. At this moment, he sees two tiny ponds. Toby only has enough strength to get to one of them. Which of these ponds is a mirage, and which is real? The left pond is real. See the clouds above it? It rained there, and the rainwater formed the pond. At the edge of the forest, quite far from the village, there was an old house. Its owner found his TV broken in the morning. Someone had smashed the screen. The owner called everyone who had been in the house that night. A cook, a cleaning lady, and a lawyer. Who broke my TV? The man asked. I was cooking dinner. I didn't touch anything, the cook said. I was cleaning the basement, the cleaning lady answered. I was upstairs. I spent the whole night studying the documents, the lawyer replied. One of them is lying. Who is it? The lawyer. He said he was upstairs, but it's a one-story house. He couldn't be studying the documents on the roof all night. Tom has lost his car keys. He's searched every corner in every room, but hasn't found them. The guy goes to the farthest room, looks at the floor, and realizes the keys are hanging on the chandelier. How does Tom know that? The floor is reflective. An elderly philosophy teacher began an exam. His students were sitting in their seats, listening to him. Here's a task for you. Prove that everything that happens around me is real, and I'm not sleeping. Whoever writes the most convincing proof will get the highest points. The students had been writing for several hours, but almost no one got a good grade, except for one girl. She wrote an essay consisting of several words. What did she put on paper? You can't read this if you're asleep. By the way, you can use this tip while sleeping. It's almost impossible to read anything in a dream. Therefore, to find out whether you're asleep or not, look at your phone and try to read something. There was an old haunted house in town. Local people were afraid to go there. But one day, three girls and two boys decided to check that place out and record whatever was happening there. They approached the scary building, but one guy, Rob, refused to come in. He said he would wait for his friends outside. The rest of the group went into the house. Rob was nervous. After waiting for them for a few minutes, he was ready to call someone for help. But all four girls and one boy returned at this moment. Rob realized there were g -g -g ghosts in the house and ran away from there. How did he know that? Three girls and one boy were in the house, but five people came out. One girl was a spirit. Rob saw her and ran away. Michael is walking along the sidewalk, holding his hands behind his back. A car appears from around the corner behind him. At this moment, Michael is walking near a big puddle. The driver accelerates. He's going to splash the water all over Michael. But at the last moment, he suddenly slows down and drives around the puddle. Why didn't he drench Michael? Michael was carrying a brick behind his back. The driver was afraid that Michael would throw it at his car, so he didn't drive over the puddle. Alexandra is walking around an old castle. There are lots of portraits of kings and queens on the walls. The corridor is lit by candles. 
Alexandra goes down to the first floor, where several people are dancing. The girl feels as if she has somehow traveled to the previous century. But wait a minute, this is all fake. How did the girl understand that? A hidden camera is installed in the corner of the hall. Also, that dancing girl has a smartwatch on her wrist. See? It's morning. Bob leaves his house and goes to the beach. The sun is peeking over the horizon. The sea is calm. There's no wind. Bob sits down on the sand, closes his eyes, and begins to meditate. Several people come up to Bob and sit down next to him to meditate too. Bob opens his eyes, sees them, and realizes that something's wrong with these people. But what? Look at Bob, and now, at how these people are sitting. They aren't touching the sand. Their bodies are half an inch above the ground. Brian had been dreaming about traveling the world. Once, he went to a job interview. Greg was a famous eccentric millionaire, and he needed help on his luxurious boat. Greg liked Brian's resume, but he needed to challenge Brian's intelligence and offered him this riddle. Turn these three toothpicks into one, and you're hired. You can make as many moves as you want, but you can't remove any toothpicks from the table. What should Brian do? Make a Roman numeral using all three toothpicks. Finally, the yacht left the port. Brian was very excited to begin his first round the world voyage. There were five people on the boat, Captain Nick, Brian, Greg, his girlfriend Lisa, and their friend Robert. In the evening, Brian served dinner for everyone. It was fresh fish and salad. Can you tell what's wrong here? There are two moons in the sky. After dinner, Greg, Robert, and Lisa began dancing. Suddenly, Greg fell to the floor, asleep. Lisa got furious and yelled, Who poisoned my boyfriend? Brian said, Captain Nick prepared the dinner. I just served it. Robert said, I'm a vegan, so I skipped the fish. Maybe it was toxic. And Captain Nick said, Hey, I'm not a criminal. I ate that fish too, and I feel totally fine. Have you guessed what happened here? Lisa had a tiny bottle with sleeping pills in her hair. She must have slipped a pill in Greg's drink so that she could spend a romantic evening with Robert. They were flirting during the dinner. Brian realized what was going on and talked to Nick privately in the captain's cabin. The man got very angry and promised to make a stop at the nearest port to leave Lisa and Robert there. Brian went to the restroom. When he returned to the cabin, he saw that Nick was gone. Brian couldn't find him anywhere, so he questioned Lisa and Robert. Lisa said, I haven't left the deck after dinner. I was taking pictures for my Instagram. Robert said, Sorry bro, I haven't seen him. I've spent the last 20 minutes in the restroom. Brian spotted the liar right away. What about you? Robert couldn't be in the restroom because Brian was there. Brian got very scared. He didn't know what to do. Lisa brought three bottles and offered Robert and Brian to drink some cola. But Brian knew that he had to be very careful with that lady. Can you help him choose the safest bottle? someone had already opened this bottle, Brian should choose one of those two. Brian went to Greg's bedroom to check how the man was doing. He noticed that Greg's safe was open and empty. At this moment, Greg woke up and noticed that someone had taken all his money. He started to shout, Who dared to rob me on my own boat? Brian said, Mr. Greg, I'm so sorry. Rob and Lisa put sleeping pills into your drink. 
and I'm afraid they've done something bad to Captain Nick. When Greg questioned his companions, Robert said, Bro, who do you think I am? This guy is a dirty liar. Lisa said, Darling, I love you. Why would I do that? Who robbed Greg? It was Captain Nick. See, he's sailing away from the yacht with a bag full of money. He took the chance to frame Lisa and Rob. The guys were left without their captain. Nobody knew how to control the yacht. In the morning, they realized that they had got lost in the ocean. They had four choices. Move to the east and meet a creepy pirate ship. Travel to the west and disembark at a desert island. Go to the south and meet with the Loch Ness Monster. Go to the north and get stuck in the Bermuda Triangle. Which option should they choose? The Loch Ness Monster is a very unpredictable opponent. The Bermuda Triangle doesn't seem to be very safe, and these pirates look pretty aggressive. So the safest choice is to move towards the desert island. They can send an SOS signal and wait for someone to save them. But a sudden storm changed their plans. It wrecked the yacht into small pieces. Take a look at this picture and try to guess how many people survived and reached the shore. All four. Although there are footprints of three men on the sand, someone must have carried Lisa in his arms. See? Her glasses are over there on the sand. The guys got very hungry. They separated to find some food on the island. Lisa found this palm and decided to pick some bananas. Greg walked through the jungle for some time and noticed this orange tree. Robert discovered a pile of coconuts on the ground, and Brian decided to catch some fish. Only one of these options is safe. Which one? A creepy snake is hiding among these bananas. A tiger is sleeping behind this orange tree. A scorpion is chilling on these coconuts. So fishing is the safest choice. After dinner, the guys gathered around a fire. They agreed to take turns sleeping to keep the fire going and scare wild animals away. Robert drew lots to be the first on duty, but he was very sleepy. Brian told him, It's okay, I can swap places with you if you guess my riddle. I'm as light as a feather, yet no man can hold me for long. What am I? Robert failed to crack this riddle. What about you? The answer is breath. Greg, Brian, and Lisa went to sleep, and Robert stayed by the fire. Early in the morning, Brian woke up and saw that the fire had gone out, and Robert was gone. Brian woke up Greg and Lisa, and they started looking for Robert. Can you help them find any clues on the beach? All four of them are barefoot. But now, there are boot prints in the sand, and a drone is flying in the sky along with the birds. It seems that this island is not as deserted as they thought. Brian, Lisa, and Greg walked around the island and found a villa on a rock. They wanted to come closer, but suddenly, they heard Lisa scream. Someone left a trap in the jungle and the girl fell into a well filled with trash. It was very deep, and Brian and Greg couldn't help her get out. Suddenly, it started to rain, and the pit began to fill with water very quickly. Lisa screamed, Help me, please! I can't swim! What should Lisa do to survive? She can take these two empty canisters and use them as a life buoy. And when the water level rises, she'll get out easily. The guys continued their journey to the mysterious villa. On the gate, they saw a combination lock with this clue. In the first line, one number is correct and well placed. In the second line, nothing is correct. In the third line, two numbers are correct, but
but in the wrong places. In the fourth line, one number is correct, but in the wrong place. And in the fifth line, one number is correct, but in the wrong place. Can you help the guys open the gate? Let's start with statement 2 and exclude numbers 9, 2, and 0. From statement 3, we can conclude that 5 and 7 are in the final code, but we still don't know the order. Let's take a look at statements 4 and 5. Both lines say that one digit is correct, but in the wrong place. So, the remaining digit can be either 8 or 6, but we already know that 7 is in the code. Therefore, the digit that fits statement 5 is 7. Now we can exclude 6 and conclude that the remaining digit must be 8. Now, let's determine the order. In statement 3, we have two correct numbers in the wrong places. Since the third position in the code is already occupied by 8, we only have one option. To put 7 first and 5 second. Therefore, the correct code is 758. The guys entered the villa. The backyard was full of pirates, and they were having a pool party. Suddenly, Lisa began to cry. Can you guess why? Robert is chilling with this lady pirate in the swimming pool. The girl is just jealous. When they finally came up to Robert, he said, Hey guys, check it out. These pirates let me join them. Greg, Lisa, and Brian decided to leave that place as soon as possible. But Robert wanted to stay because he got engaged with Gemma. She was a big boss there. Everyone worked for her. Brian looked around, searching for a way out. He noticed these three guys. He realized that one of them was an imposter. What about you? Can you see the imposter? It's the third guy. He has a police badge. He must be working undercover. The police officer's name was Mike. Brian asked him for help. Mike pretended that he didn't speak English, but later he gave Brian this note. It was encrypted and the ink was to disappear in 10 seconds. Can you crack the code? It says, helicopter. Greg, Lisa, and Brian jumped into the helicopter. Mike tried to start the machine with a stolen key, but the system demanded a password. Here's a hint. I am the beginning of sorrow and the end of sickness. You cannot express happiness without me, yet I am in the midst of crosses. I am always at risk, yet never in danger. You may find me in the sun, but I am never out of the darkness. What am I? Have you guessed? The correct answer is the letter S.